I'm joined now by Brian Dow, Chief Executive of Mental Health UK. Hello, Brian. Hi, Sean. Uh, tell us first about the societal issues that are currently affecting people's mental health. Well, we've been talking at Mental Health UK for a number of years now about how we shouldn't see the issue of mental health in isolation. There are so many other factors that affect our mental health, our, our, our housing, our, our finances, how connected we are with our friends and family. And of course, along comes the global pandemic and proves that truth horribly so because, of course, not only do people have kind of serious problems with their money, they were worried about losing their jobs, they got really disconnected from their fam families. And of course, throughout that process, the pressure on people's mental health was profound. And quite rightly, the government made sure that in all of its decisions about furloughing, about people's uh, you know, situations personally, about whether or not the vaccine would move at what speed, mental health was at the centre of that. And that was absolutely right, because you cannot see mental health as a thing that exists over here, separate from everything else in your life. Now, you mentioned financial issues and of course everybody's thinking about the cost of living crisis and how that is going to directly impact mental health. What do you think the long-term consequences of that might be? Well I think the long-term consequences of it could be very very profound if we don't see the right level of action from the government because what you're beginning to see over the last two or three months when this is suddenly um, hove into view is the pressure that people are feeling is actually beginning to show up through the health system. So if you take our own mental health and money advice service, the number of people who've called us over the last couple of months has doubled. The amount of debt that people are in because of their gas and electricity bill has doubled. Mm. And that is going to trickle through to your GP, potentially people in more serious trouble. So I think we have to think very seriously about the level of support and intervention that people get, because if we don't, that's going to show up as pressure somewhere else in the system, and we don't want that. No. What I've noticed, I guess, is that a lot of companies are now taking the mental health of their employees, their, their customers, the wider society, a lot more seriously, and they're doing a lot more. What have you noticed, and what impact can that have? Well, we spend so much of our time at work, and of course, work can keep us well, because, you know, it provides us with a social fabric. Uh, we, we get our income from work, and we meet lots of friends, and hopefully move up uh, through our lives. But what can also make us unwell? If you're in a toxic environment with a manager that really doesn't care about you and is, is, is perhaps bullying you, that can create a spiral. So I think a lot of companies over the last 10 years or so have begun to realize that just in the same way that we made incredible progress around the question of physical health and importantly, the health and safety agenda at work, mm. if you're not doing the same thing with mental health, then you're not only perhaps putting pressure on your employees, but it really will affect your bottom line as well. Because of course, mental health is the single big, biggest factor in absenteeism mm -hmm. and presenteeism. So actually, workplaces don't really have a choice, they've got to get with the agenda. There are things we can do as individuals. What advice would you give to, to anyone looking for, for some self-care tips, things to look after themselves? Well, I think there's four things. The first is the sort of prevention bit. So, you know, having a, a good diet, sleeping well, making sure that you are you know, connected in with your social group um, and so on, things like that, the kind of prevention, the, the basics. Then what do you do if you become unwell or you suspect you're unwell? And of course that's seek help, talk about it. Mm. The change we've seen in the stigma around mental health helps a great deal. I would also kind of encourage people who are thinking about mental health and there is some evidence that's becoming one of the most important things in terms of the public's voting um, intentions is that perhaps people might want to join the professions. There are you know, lots of opportunities. And I, and I would say that, you know, as well as being individuals, we are all citizens. And I think what we need to do is demand change from government that the investment that goes into mental health really meets the, the need that's developed over the last few years. Brian Dow, thanks very much. Pleasure.